If you're anything like me, you have become a diligent note taker. Whether you're in meetings taking notes on that or studying a topic or anything else, you have Obsidian or another note taking app, you've built systems, you've built customizations, and you've gotten really good at taking notes. But that is just the first step. What you need is to actually be able to do something with those notes. And that is by far the hardest part. So you have your second brain, but is it actually functioning like a second brain? So I've developed a few different systems that I use to actually use the notes that I'm taking. And I wanna share some of those with you. Just to note, this is not definitive. There are lots of additional things you can be doing. And I think technology is eventually going to catch up too. But for now, I think that these are some really great ways that you could actually use the notes that you take. These are five ways to actually use the notes that you're taking. Always process article, book, or meeting notes after writing or importing. I've developed a practice that I like to call processing my notes. It's sort of loosely based on Zettel Keston and the process is outlined in this book, How to Take Smart Notes, but it's been modified for my use and I'm gonna show you kind of what that means here too. At some point you will finish writing a note, whether that's after a meeting is over or after you finish reading an article or reading a book and you'll have a list or a, a note full of things that you wanted to remember from that note. There are a few different steps after that point that I take in order to process my notes. The first is actually reread everything. And as I'm rereading it, I flesh out the ideas. I make sure everything that I'm writing is clear enough for my future self. And as I'm going through it, I will bold and italicize certain parts of those raw notes. So key points that I want to jump out at me when I reread this note, I'll make in bold and helper phrases or anything kind of related to that, I'll add in italicize. After that's done, I'll add another section to the very top of the note where I rewrite the main points in my own words. This forces me to actually think about what I'm learning and internalize it. Plus, it's a gift for my future self when I return back to this note to remember what I found valuable from it. This is also the point where you link to your other notes, you add tags, you do all that housekeeping stuff. And optionally, if you have a property tag for summary, write a one sentence summary. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later in this video. Start doing random note Fridays. There is a button on the left-hand sidebar of Obsidian that looks like a die. And when you click it, it opens a random note. This isn't just gambling, it's actually a great way to review notes that you might not have seen in a while. So dedicate maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes every Friday and click that note and go back and review random notes in your system. But don't just read them, actually do work on them. So flesh out the ideas, link them to other notes in your system, or if relevant, copy that stuff from that note and paste it into another note that you have and just delete the, the note that you're not really using that much. If you have a big vault, and eventually you will, the random button might not be as helpful to you. So you might wanna look at a plugin. There's one called Smart Random Note, where you can specify certain properties of notes that you would like to be uh, bubbled up when you click the button. So it's not quite as random as the built-in random notes, but it'll help you actually process notes that you want to be looking back and reviewing. Implementing a habit like this is gonna be great for reviewing old notes and remembering what you wrote. Use graph view to find loan notes and make them less lonely. The graph view in Obsidian can be mesmerizing and is a particular draw to people that are new to Obsidian. But as you work in the system, you find that you just don't quite use it that much because it's just not that useful. Except for one way. If you use your graph view to find individual nodes that are unattached, that's a great way to go through your system and find notes that might not be processed. So when you jump into those notes, see if there is a link to any other notes in your system. Do that sort of housekeeping that you would do on any of your other notes and make sure that those ideas in those unattached nodes are incorporated into your larger system. This can be done on Friday, like your random note habit, or just any time you wanna get a little bit done in your vault. If you're approaching your vault like a digital gardener, this is sort of like pruning the tree. Add a summary property to all applicable notes. I mentioned before that you might wanna have a property of your notes called summary. And this is great for meeting notes. I talk about it in my meeting notes a tutorial uh, video, but it's also really handy for a lot of other notes in your system. Basically, you can add a property called summary 
And then for notes that are applicable, just add a one sentence summary as to what that note is about. Then you can use data view tables and that data view table, table can pl pull in that summary information on a map of contents or any other page that you create that you list all of those notes. That way, when you're seeing a list of all of your notes, you have a quick summary at a glance so you know what is in that note. So you don't have to jump into it and reread it every time you want to go back through that information. You'll have a nice summary for yourself. And it's also a really great indicator if you have already processed that note or not. If you add a summary, then you can look through all of your notes and see which have summaries and which don't, and then jump into those ones that don't have a summary because those are kind of on your to-do list that you want to revisit at some point. And lastly, and most importantly, publish your work. I can't emphasize this enough. Publish your work. It could be a personal blog that you do. It could be WordPress, Squarespace, whatever you want to do, please just get your work out there. It's really great in terms of forcing you to fully flesh out your ideas. And even if nobody is reading it, it will compound an interest for you in terms of the value of this note. Because in the future, you may have somebody Googling your name because they're thinking about hiring you, or you want to have some sort of online presence. And having this writing online will show proof that you are thoughtful, that you're thinking a variety of topics, and it has been the most valuable thing for me in my career, and it will be for you as well. Many years ago when I was working retail, I created a WordPress website and I just started randomly publishing things. Because of that, I happened to get my very first job as a staff writer based on this portfolio of work that I just personally self-published. You can create content that is kind of niche in terms of your specialty, and then even if nobody's reading it immediately, you'll eventually get that SEO or search engine optimization juice. You never know what of your writing is going to pop off and get popular, but doing this and doing it for a sustained amount of time will provide value. Like I said, it's compounding interest of value in your writing. And as I mentioned in a previous video, writing is thinking. So forcing yourself to publish is forcing you to think and you will understand topics better and just be a better note taker in general. And those are some tips for actually using the notes that you write. I'm curious if you have any ideas, ways that you are using your notes after you write them, please let me know in the comments below. I don't just say that to get comments. I want to actually incorporate these ideas myself. So I would love to hear from you if you have a good system for actually using your notes. As usual, if you've liked this video, like it, subscribe to my channel. I have a monthly newsletter you also might like, so please subscribe to that. And I will see you in the next video.